The genetic history of the Irish people is deeply rooted in the prehistoric movements and adaptations of various human populations. The earliest inhabitants of Europe were Neanderthals, who lived across the continent, including parts of what is now Ireland. While Neanderthals eventually went extinct, their genetic legacy lives on in the DNA of modern Europeans, including the Irish. According to the experts, modern Irish carry around 2% of ancestry from the Neanderthal and the rest of the ancestry is derived from a hypothetical Basil Oe population. Basil Oe, which essentially just means out of Africa, cannot be quite classified into modern racial clusters. We do have some early Oe genomes from the Aurignacian culture, and we see a peculiar pattern with these samples. The early samples from this culture seem to resemble South Asians with PCA calculators. You will find some of their DNA results on my YouTube channel, in fact. This early population was gradually transformed into the Cro-Magnets, around 35,000 years ago. What is very fascinating is that unlike the early Aurignacians, these later Cro-Magnets, such as for example BK1653, or the Sungir genomes, seem to cluster much closer to Europeans. The Cro-Magnons carried patrilineal lineages C and mitochondrial lineage, U, which is still relatively common in modern Europeans. In shorter terms, Ireland was first inhabited by Neanderthals, then by Aurignacians which were Homo sapiens partly mixed with Neanderthals, and which initially resembled South Asians but gradually evolved to somewhat resemble modern Europeans. These Aurignacians are usually referred to as Cro-Magnons, which is a term that came about from a name of a cave in France where the earliest modern human skull in Europe was discovered. In the time period from 30,000 years ago to 10,000 years ago, a lot has changed. The inhabitants of Europe underwent a major genetic shift. From Cro-Magnons to Gravedians to the European hunter-gatherers, Europeans gradually started to diverge from their basal ancestors and evolve into a separate European cluster. During this time, the ancient North Eurasians also formed in Siberia as a mixture of Gravedians with something relating to Eastern Ole, so essentially South and East Eurasians. The Gravedians, which were an intermediate population between the cro and the European hunter-gatherers, carried mitochondrial lineage U and patrilineal lineages C, just like the cro -Magnons. At this time, patrilineal lineages deriving from F lineage entered West Eurasia, namely I and R. Patrilial lineages I and R will later become the dominant Y lineages among European hunter-gatherers, completely replacing the Gravedian C. As the Ice Age receded, Ireland became hospitable for new settlers. Western hunter-gatherers, who spread across Europe, populated Ireland around 10,000 BCE. These people lived a nomadic lifestyle, relying on hunting and foraging. Their genetic markers remain a significant part of the Irish gene pool reflecting the deep-rooted connections between Ireland and early European populations. The Western hunter-gatherers carried Y lineages I2 and mitochondrial lineage U, which are both still very much present among the modern Irish. Unlike their predecessors which had brown pigmentation and would look totally foreign to modern Europeans, the Western hunter-gatherers were quite a lot whiter and would probably resemble southern Europeans in pigmentation. In summary, during the Epipaleolithic, the population of Europe got wider and went through a replacement of Y lineages from C to I2, which set the stage for Western hunter-gatherers as they populated Ireland in the Mesolithic. During the late European Mesolithic, Anatolian hunter-gatherers discovered farming through contacts with populations of the Levant. After having discovered farming, those Anatolian farmers rapidly colonized Europe. Historians and geneticists refer to these Anatolian colonizers as early European farmers, and Ireland had the perfect conditions for them. Around 4000 BCE, the arrival of Neolithic farmers brought significant changes. These farmers, migrating from Central Europe, introduced agriculture to Ireland, fundamentally transforming the landscape and the genetic makeup of its inhabitants. The subsequent era saw the rise of the megalithic builders, who constructed grand ceremonial sites like Newgrange. These builders were part of a broader megalithic tradition that spanned Europe, including Ireland. One phenomenon that is commonly overlooked is that if you observe the pottery patterns of the Belbiker culture, which we will talk about a little bit later, uh, if you observe the pottery patterns of the Belbiker culture, they match very closely the pottery patterns of the megalithic builders. 
and it is assumed commonly that bell beakers were indo europeans but if their pottery patterns match the pottery patterns of the megalithic builders which we know are not indo europeans which we know were a mixture of the western hunter gatherers with the anatolian farmers uh, from that we can assume that the bell beakers actually either had a very significant amount of cultural um, cultural influence from the megalithic builders or even were in some cases entirely culturally megalithic around 2500 to 2000 bce the bell beaker culture made its mark on ireland introducing with it the y lineage r1b l51 which is the dominant lineage in western europe originating from the iberian peninsula the bell beakers were known for their distinctive pottery and advanced metalworking the bell beaker culture brought Indo-European ancestry into Ireland. Most scholars agree that the bell beakers were Indo-Europeans, although you will find critics of this hypothesis as well, who mostly cite archaeological evidence against the Indo-Europeanists of the bell beakers. Celts did not appear in Ireland until the Late Bronze Age, coming there from the late Urnfield culture of Central Europe, which ultimately derived from the Great Unetis culture, which is the cultural and linguistic ancestor culture of Slavs, Germanics, Balts, and Celts. Using Global 25, we can make some pretty interesting admixture models for the Irish people. We can make a Bronze Age model, modeling the Irish as a mixture of Unetis culture and Bell Beakers from the British Isles. We can make a Iron Age model where we model the Irish as a mixture of Insular Celts and Germanics. We can make a Neolithic model where we model the Irish as a mixture of Yamnea Proto Indo Europeans, Western hunter gatherers, and Anatolian Neolithic farmers. And we can even make a Mesolithic model, where we model the Irish as a mixture of Western hunter-gatherers, Eastern hunter-gatherers, Anatolian hunter-gatherers, and Caucasus hunter-gatherers, although G25 is known to be less reliable for Mesolithic modeling. 